Hello, this is Jeremy James and welcome to Some Good News Bluegrass. This week we have Mass Crusaders, The Weather, Senior for Seniors, COVID Cooking with Buddha, Quarantine Shopping, Give Me Shelter, and a little segment we like to call Open Up and Say Ah. From the start of the pandemic, we've seen folks all across the bluegrass stepping up in great ways. Alicia from the Stitchery in Lexington stepped up early on and she started making masks for folks all across Kentucky. She's outfitted realtors, police officers, pretty much every, everybody you can think of in her cloth masks. She's even started on developing a new prototype, which you can see here. It's the middle of May now, and we're all expecting nice warm weather. McKenna, how is the weather outside? The weather's looking up pretty good. Across Kentucky this last week, most of the high schools have actually finished up their school years, which meant that the class of 2020 crossed an invisible finish line. Many of them are preparing for their virtual graduation services, but there was another group of seniors who wanted to give them a message of their own. As we found ourselves spending more and more time at home, we've either taken advantage of curbside delivery, home delivery of our food, or even ventured into that space we like to call the kitchen. This week, I want to share a nice recipe from our barbecue Buddha. Whether it's from boredom or necessity, most of us at one point or another over the last few weeks have found ourselves online in the middle of the night buying stuff for the house. Sometimes we buy stuff we don't need, like this young lady. Hey, Ross, what a cute little lizard I got. And I got him on sale. Yes, I did. Hey, Grandma. Hello. That's not a lizard, okay? You should probably drop that leash and run the other way, okay? Shall I? Yeah. Over the last two months, many of us may very well have taken for granted the fact that we actually have a place to be able to call home and a place to quarantine in. Not everybody shares that, and tonight we talk with Andrew Shade at Arbor Youth Services to talk a little bit more about the awesome work they've been doing. Good morning, this is Jeremy James with Some Good News Bluegrass. I'm on this morning with Andrew Shade, the Development Director at Arbor Youth um, Services in Lexington. Andrew, how are you doing this morning? Hey, I'm good. I'm doing well. Well, thank you for having me on. Hey, we, we got kind of hooked up to Dave, Dave a couple days ago. 
um, yeah. doing some stuff on, on Kentucky Gives and, and that type of thing. Uh, love what you guys are doing. Um, so tell me a little bit more about what Arbor Youth is. Yeah, so Arbor Youth, we're basically Central Kentucky's only emergency shelter for unaccompanied youth, um, which basically means we're kind of like a homeless shelter for kids. Um, there's kind of a hundred different reasons why kids need somewhere safe to stay, and that's what we are. Yeah. Kentucky, really, we take kids from all over the state, um, but definitely here in our area. And uh, we have basically two houses uh, side by side. One is for, our, I call our little kids, newborn babies through age 17. They, they're the ones that actually live with us. Could be one night, could be two months. Every story is kind of different. And then the house next door, we work with homeless 18 to 24 year olds who they don't live on the property or stay overnight with us but because uh, they may be living in a tent or under a bridge, but they can stop in during the day and take a shower or wash their clothes or cook a meal. And our staff work with them one-on-one -on -one to get them off the street by uh, uh, find, helping them get an ID made, uh, write a resume, job interview skills, and then eventually uh, find work and uh, become uh, self-sustaining. Well, you have three facilities right now. We're the two, two are side by side with the, um, I guess the home for minors, right? And then the yep. resource center? Yep, our uh, emergency shelter and outreach center are both on West Third Street, uh, not far from Rupp Arena, mm -hmm. uh, near Blue Stallion Brewing, if anyone's ever had a beer there. <laughs> that we're neighbors, basically, just a few houses down. And um, we have a new facility that we've opened this year that is, uh, we've done a soft opening, we're gonna continue to open, but um, it's a six unit apartment. Uh, we do have residents living in there now, and that's the house 18 to 24 year olds who are homeless, it's transitional housing. I just wanna kind of go through through my own thinking. Um, you got newborn to 17 in one location, That's and that's residential. They actually live with you there. Uh, how many beds is that? Uh, we can sleep up to 12 okay. uh, in that facility, yep, um, which is a crazy thing because we can go from having one kid in the morning, and by lunchtime, we have 12. Uh, we often see big, dramatic influxes in our residency, and that's often because we get big sibling groups. Um, you know, we'll have not one kid show up at the door, but four uh, brothers and sisters. So that, that's a residential house. Then one next door is an outreach center for 18 to 24, like resources and, and um, helping them get IDs and all that kind of stuff, right? Exactly, yep. They can just drop in during the days. And that is great. So the outreach center, and then you have, um, I think you said the, an apartment complex, is that correct? Yep, yep, that's uh, fairly new. We just moved in our first resident <clears throat> uh, just several weeks ago, uh, and it's just a six unit apartment, so it's not big. Uh, but that is a, a place where we can immediately house uh, homeless 18 to 24 year olds uh, while we work with them on kind of their next plan on how to get a job, build a budget, um, learn how to pay rent and bills and what does that look like. Uh, a lot of young folks don't have any of that experience. So that's kind of a, a learning, a learning program for them to live there, have their own space. Um, we, see, we see a lot of transitional housing, housing for adults. Um, I think this is the first that at least I'm aware, and that might just be my own ignorance, um, about transitional housing for youth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what's, what's I think unique with 18 to 24 year olds is technically they are adults. They could go sleep at an adult shelter. But imagine um, coming out of high school, you're eight, just turned 18 years old, you find yourself homeless for whatever reason, and you go to a, an adult shelter that is full of 40, 50, 60 year old men. The, the need gap is so different between. Very them. different. And federally speaking, anyone 24 and under is considered a youth. Um, so that's why we work with youth. For, uh, portions of our brain don't fully develop until we're about 24 years old. So that's yeah, I have why an just a little, little trivia. Yeah, I have an 18 year old in the house. I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ugly looks in the stairs after that. Uh -huh. um, so, what a um, life before COVID, everything was going going well. Um, mm -hmm. COVID has thrown us a curveball and thrown a monkey wrench into a lot of our plans, and so we've had to adjust in a lot of different ways. Um, what are some of the different ways that you all have have had to make adjustments for for COVID um, with your work? Yeah, I mean, it has definitely changed us. We um, um, so we're moving full steam ahead, expanding um, our reach, uh, and we're super proud and excited about that. And then, bam. <laughs> The COVID train hit us like it did everyone and every nonprofit, of course. And uh, so we're seeing uh, some funding sources have, have uh, canceled or um, postponed um, because of COVID. And uh, there's no volunteer. We understand the world has changed. 
you were initially uh, the Lexington Fayette Urban County government, the mayor's proposed budget currently has cut um, all funding to several uh, emergency shelters, uh, certainly including us. Within a couple of days of that uh, news release, uh, the mayor gave us a call and said, I have a friend who wants to donate the $237,000 that was cut from our budget. So that was uh, certainly wow. a blessing. Uh, so it's just there are days where we're like, man, today's rough. And then the next day, it's just like, oh, we got these two great phone calls that just feel great. We've had people do fundraisers for us. Crank and Boom, a uh, local ice cream shop just did a fundraiser for us. And we're nervous as to what, what this will all lead to as far as the homeless community in uh, central Kentucky. Um, people have lost jobs, lost funding at home. Uh, there's, I feel like when this kind of eviction protection is over, mm -hmm. we're going to see this mass influx in the homeless population. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled that they have you because just looking through the social media and everything else that they've got going on, I can tell that you not only have a passion for the work, but know how to be able to use these tools in order to get uh, the message out there and in, in front of the world. Um, yeah. So that's well, I, I th uh, the one thing I've noticed about Kentucky is Kentucky Kentuckians help each other. Like it's this is such a great state for people to say, "Hey, I'm in trouble. I need a little help," and people do. I love that. That is not the case everywhere in the world. I get emotional. I talk about it, but um, people just come to rescue of these kids, and um, so that's the one thing. Everybody watching, please find us Arbor Youth on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We post these kids' needs up to the minute almost. You guys have um, stayed open. I'm obviously essential service um, throughout all of this. What what changes have you made operationally uh, yeah. with COVID? Yeah, we have a lot more staff working from home. If you're not frontline with the kid, um, uh, we're trying to keep everybody at home. We're just trying to decrease every chance of, of uh, anyone becoming infected in the shelter. Uh, we do have a complete procedure as to what to do in the second that, that – um, a child or a staff is showing symptoms. We check uh, temperatures for anyone that enters the building. We check everyone's temperature, staff and youth, every four hours. And now we've asked people dropping off donations to leave it on the front patio. And that makes us sick to our stomach to have to do that. Um, that is not the way we want to treat the kind people that keep us alive. So obviously we all want to, um, we're, we're here in the midst of everything and we're looking down the road. What does post-COVID life look like for you all? Uh, my hopes is we can kind of go back to our, our steam engine that we had rolling and kind of mm -hmm. get back to going. We we will have a financial shortfall this year. I just um, don't don't know that there's a clear path around it. Um, uh, we're not scared. Not not we we will not shut our doors this year. That is not right. the predicament that we particularly in. Right. We like to end our year in the black every year, and we're gonna somehow this year. Um, we'll have to figure out what we're gonna do about our large annual fundraiser. Um, if that's still, if we're going to be allowed to have 200 people in a room in August or not. Probably not. Um, but people's health will always come first, and that's just how it's going to have to be. Well, and what are some different ways that, that folks can contribute? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, people can uh, donate right through our website. Um, we have Venmo, um, which is listed on our Facebook, uh, how to find us on there. Of course, people can donate uh, items that we need, and that really changes all the time. My ask to everyone out there is if you're going to bring in supplies, drop us a call, call us or send us an email and say, hey, what do you need today? Because it'll change. And of course, cash we love is good too. Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, donating money, it, it, it's, it's fun to donate toys to kids and donate teddy bears, and that's fun. I love to do that. Yep. Um, but when, when people donate dollars, then we have that set in a separate account that we can use as needed. Um, I understand that so, it's, not a, it, it's not as fluffy to give dollars, but right. it goes to exactly where it needs to go. And we are proud and transparent about our financials, about yeah. what we do. I work with the best freaking people in the world. Anybody watching, if you are looking for a place, if, you, if you're blessed with, uh, with your job and you're looking for a place to be able to contribute, to be able to help out, consider Arbor Youth. We're going to have all the links and all the information uh, scattered about where you can where you can give um, the Venmo accounts. You can I mean, 10, 20 bucks, whatever. Um, don't go to Starbucks. Don't go to coffee. Just drop five bucks in. Something small. You might think that's nah, not a big deal. That stuff adds up. It really does. Andrew, I want to thank you for coming on today. Um, yeah, thank and, you. And good luck through um, as we go forward. Heck yeah, appreciate it so much.
everybody find us on social media. Keep up to date with what's going on. Um, we need good folks like y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Um, bye bye. Bye. This week, we're going to seek restaurants in Kentucky opening back up again. Since we're all a little bit out of practice, here's a couple tips on what not to do when you go out to eat in our segment called Open Up and Say Ah. All right, folks, that's our first month of shows. If you want to see more Some Good News Bluegrass, be sure to like, comment, and share. If you have stories you'd like to see, send them to us. We'll reach out. We'll cover them. We'll see you all next week on Some Good News Bluegrass. Bluegrass.